I scanned the script, uh, extended the margin of it a little bit, did some thumbnails in it. First, kind of as a an acting pass, just to kind of figure out what his, he would be doing. A uh, challenge with this one is it's a one-man conversation. He's having a conversation with an, an unseen person, so it's not a, a normal situation. We don't have the luxury of cutting away from the character, particularly, so we have to kind of make a, a single shot work. And um, I broke it into acting beats after the fact. I went in and, well, uh, let's see. Ring goes, can we get on with it? <sighs> Finally. So I think that's, I, to, to some extent, acting beats are what's in the guy's head and when does he change change direction. So I said, at this point, he's angry. He's in finally, and then takes on a new tack, and then the narrator kicks back in again, so he would be gradually getting more annoyed until he comes in here and he's fully annoyed. Oh, just leave it to me, will you? He's now at the please leave stage of his life. And, well, I haven't finished yet. Oh, no, it's worse. He's moved into positively peaked. Uh, shot up. And though he doesn't sigh, this is the equivalent of a sigh. Now I can get on with it. <laughs> and then, like, and I, I know this feeling. You know, so I just wrote what I, I that's that feeling. And, uh, and stay out is the ending. So I figure and stay out can be on a blank screen. I think that would be just as funny. Uh, and then, so what are his positions? Uh, he says he's leaning against the desk in the script, so I kind of have to run with that. At what point does he gradually know he's going to stand up? Uh, he's looking around. You know, I can't believe this is happening. Uh, he's gesturing, please leave. No. <laughs> so I thought it would be funny to, no, I'm not listening. Please. And then, oh, some kind of head, head wipe, and then he exits. So this might be an angle change. Uh, I've indicated where uh, medium shot versus close up, sort of accidentally. I was kind of drawing it sloppy and went, well, yeah, that could be a, a cut. So there's my thought process on that. And those thumbs can go right into my project and become at least my initial timing and sort of an initial drawing. So let's let's experiment with that as an example. I am starting a brand new document that's going to be my scene. So. This is putting a lot of eggs in one basket in terms of digital media. Like if this is a Photoshop file that I'm going to lose, that the computer's going to screw up, that uh, that's going to go corrupt. <sighs> Got to be careful because this is going to be holding a lot of work. So I would recommend that if you do work exclusively in Photoshop, you're saving iteratively, which means every day, every couple of hours or every hour, you're saving as and putting a new number at the end of it. So this is scene one underscore one. So I'll start with that and uh, take it from there. So a new document, and it is going to be, I'll do a film and video preset of 1920 by 1080, 72, yes, 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 create. I will also go to window, timeline, turning on the timeline. Oops, slipped and hit tool presets. Timeline. And now I've got the normal uh, space down here to handle it as uh, animation. Uh, which I activate by hitting create video timeline. So now I've got, I've got time, linear time, from beginning to end. Left is the beginning, right is the end. Let's bring in the audio. You'll notice that right down below my layer zero is audio track, and I can add audio. So I'll bring in the audio I just made. Desktop, and there it is. And it might take a second to load, which is normal for Photoshop because Photoshop doesn't think of itself as an audio program, particularly. I should be able to play that. Well, well I'm glad to hear that. I'm there it is. Okay, so what I might do is organize this. This is all taking place in one location, one scene. So I made a background in advance, which is just a traceover of some uh, stuff that I found. Come on, baby. Uh, I guess I get rid of it, but you know, just super basic. In fact, uh, I'm not gonna bother. It's just, Flatten it. I'm going to copy it to the clipboard and I'll just go ahead and I'm going to paste it into my new, let's save this as uh, animatic 01. 
PSD. Okay, and I will paste. Okay, uh, it will always paste on top. So if I wanted to be able to draw on top of that, I'll need to uh, put something else over it. And let me check my script. Uh, it appears as if uh, I start with kind of a wide shot. So now I designed this in 1920 by 1080. If I want it bigger, I'm going to need to scale it. That's not ideal, but that's OK. And uh, it's my office. Let's close that. Done with it. And so to some extent, this is going to last the entire scene. So I might opt to right now just drag that out to be the full length of that sequence. If I want to punch in, I'll put a split in it, scale up that background, and I'll have a new reframing possibility uh, to do a medium or close-up. I'm going to just use my, um, my reference from the, the script thumbnails. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I've been hanging around here for hours. OK, so that is this one. So I'll copy it to so clipboard, copy, and I'll pop it in over here. I always put the edit line exactly where I want it to go. And OK, yes, he's rather small. Doesn't make him a bad guy. I'll set it to multiply temporarily and scale it up. And let's put him against the desk. OK, so first shot. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I've been hanging around here for hours. Let's see if that covers me for the full of that. Oh, he stands up somewhere in the middle of the next guy's line. So let's put that in. Copy to the clipboard. Anyway, this person who was... So I think I want to split there where he stops talking because uh, his mouth is still open. That seems like a, a logical place to put that. So I will uh, zoom in on my timeline a little bit. Around here for hours. Done talking. Uh, I can split it if I love part of my drawing. I don't. <laughs> uh, but I could just come in here real quick and um, selecting this guy, come in here and erase his mouth and close it. That'd be a, that'd be a good start. Right. Oh, anyway. <laughs> right, totally animated at this point. This person. So the uh, guy starts talking again. I feel like that's a split. I'll split that and uh, have him look the other way, like turning his head before he stands up. So maybe an easy way to do that would be to just select it and uh, well, I guess just get his whole chin there too, even though arguably Ringo didn't have much of a chin. Uh, oh, got to be on the right layer. So here I've got two things selected, which is probably pretty natural to happen if you're doing a split. So I got to get off of that tool, escape, V, like that guy. Now I can Command T and just uh, Control in here and flip horizontal. And okay, so potential new acting that you hang around here for hours. Anyway, this person who is <laughs> stupid. Okay, so right about now he should be standing up. So I'll paste in my uh, new piece here. Uh, paste. All right, set it to multiply again. Multiply is so that I can see through the white there because I didn't uh, originate it in a blank world. And I gotta, gotta make sure my scale is right. Let's see. Someone who was extremely bored. Got a little small. Uh, this is where seeing them together might help, so I'm gonna bump them in. So I'm just overlapping it temporarily so I can see what I'm up to here. And uh, just get his head to be about the right size. Put him back where he belongs. And be careful that um, I don't leave a gap so he doesn't disappear for a second. And I no longer need all of this. We're going to animate those items. Save as I go. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I've been hanging around here for hours. Anyway, this person who was extremely boring and uninteresting worked <laughs> uh, Sorry, I'm very easily amused at bad animation. So you guys will be fine. Um, In this dull, drab office, it's impossible. I feel like there should be a cut there. Old drab office. Oh. All right, so now a split of my background and a split of this guy. And let's scale the background now. So this becomes probably a good idea to start labeling stuff. So I have uh, layers two through three copy here. I'm sorry, two through three. 
are part of that first shot. I'm going to group it and call it shot one. You can see how organizing this might help. I'm going to call this part of that, so bump it up. Organizing. Uh, this is background one, so shot one BG. I might have to come back and copy that again if I, I don't want to take my old one and scale it back down, so I'll probably come back to that wide shot. But let's make this a, a refield, a zoom in. So in this case, I'm going to uh, scale up the background, which would be hard for me with no space, but punch into like a medium or so, which means that he's going to go in too, uh, making sure we got the right layer. Horizon there. Let's see how that plays. It's impossible to say. Okay. Right? You can see how that could go. And then go back and fix those drawings because they're terrible. Uh, but that could be a rough. I mean, if that was your rough pass for next week and it had obvious intention, like, okay, he doesn't have ankles, but I know he's leaning against a, a thing, you know. Um, it does communicate the idea. Obviously coming in and inking in his background so he's not see-through would be a nice little um, convenience for folks. They don't have to look at it looking weird, so I might just come in here and do a quick... I think I put that in the wrong order, but that's all right. Fix it in a second. He's the brightest guy in his office. Yeah, there's me. A little easier to look at, marginally. Then it might be nice to make him look like the, the character. Um, again, that was me working hastily. Now, uh, with that fill, you'll notice it works pretty well for even the second panel. So now I just need to maybe alter it a little bit. So I would um, go through it as a, yeah, he's see-through. I'll fix it when I'm done. Do that first guy. And if his pose isn't changing all that much, you got 80% of that work done. You can just split that and change it up. If I find that I want to change the length of something, it starts to get a little crazy here. So I might organize, let's, oops, that was a bad move probably. I kind of like to keep their pieces together. Actually, I could probably do it like this too, come to think of it. Just like those two, bring them down. As long as we're not overwriting anything. Yeah, I just kind of overwrote something. All right, so if we want to alter that next Pose. It's actually right here that we need it. Ah! Too many heads. I need to label. Definitely need to label my stuff. Because that's probably his face, right? Yeah. That's his whole body. Yeah. So it's this that gets altered. Another split. Make sure you have the right thing. Pop it. Boy, so when you cut it, it keeps both things selected. Not necessarily a great uh, situation, but now I can tune up that fill. So when you're done with that, render video is under this little guy right here. Also under here. Minor things you might want to set up first would be, uh, no, 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 where is it? Timeline frame rate. So this is set to something that's a little overkill for us. So if we do our 24, it's going to be fine. You'll notice that uh, it updated just fine. Let's say it's perfect. Let's say we're done. I'm going to render that video just so I can show you. Uh, MP4 would be perfectly good. This is going to go to my desktop. For me at the moment, that's fine. I'll say render. And uh, depending on what we have, this could take a while. Obviously, for me, I've got nine seconds of guy, and then it gets pretty boring after that. But theory has it that we'll close this. We'll go into Premiere. We'll import, sorry, Command-I, our video, which I said was a desktop mp4 import and i only need the picture out of this so i can double click on it here and take video only drop 
up on the tap. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I've been hanging around here for hours. Anyway, this person who was extremely boring and un... Right. There it is. I'm starting to build it up. Without camera movement yet. I'm talking about maybe camera movement next time. But uh, pipeline. Almost all of it. Except the, the mental part, which we've talked about the rest of the class.